Hello, Tragic here, and welcome to Mage Knight. Uh, I think this is probably the last round because good old Etheria here has actually got an empty deck, so she's going to declare end around this turn. So they haven't got much time, and we have probably one of the worst mana pools I've ever seen. I've actually seen this in real life a couple of times. I've once seen it all gold and I've once seen it all black. So it's happened to me three times now. It's just unbelievable. So we've had an incredibly hard game because the mana has been horrible the whole game and we had huge slow start with all these swamps. It's just been a real, real pain. So basically, I mean, Wolfhawk hasn't even got a single point of XP yet. I mean, normally everyone, by the end of the first day, everyone's on this low in here. But, I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. Okay, let's see what Goldex is going to do. Yablamo. Okay, so we do have a map pass. Okay, so this is actually a pretty decent hand. There's lots of green in this hand, and we do have a mana draw, and we have white crystals. So... There's plenty of gas in this hand. And we also have the Foresters, which allows us to move a lot quicker. Now, the Foresters is a really underrated card, in my opinion. He's only five, but the movement that this card gives you is just so good. He generates two move, plus he reduces three types of landscapes by one, which is freaking awesome. So if we come over here, what have we got here? So he's down here. So this is normally... Uh, three six but actually it's uh only four one two three four because both mountains and forests are reduced by one by that guy so it's very easy for us to get in here and let's see if we can actually take this guy out i'm pretty sure we will be able to so we need to produce five block and then three attack, or we need to take wounds and do six attack. So I'd much rather produce the five block, which shouldn't be too much of an issue, because we do have will focus, which is when you play this, play another action card with it, get the strong effect of that action card of free, blah, blah, blah. But what makes this different from the normal uh, concentration or whatever is that this gives plus three instead of plus uh, two. So that's uh, that's so that gives gives a lot of power there. Plus, we've also got ambush, which is a fantastic card. Not only does it create movement, it also allows us to boost our attack or defense. So you can add one to your first attack card of any type, or add two to your first block card of every type. You know, and this includes sideways cards. So if we power this with green, it says add four to your first block. So if I powered that with green, I can just go block one, and that's actually block five, which is all we need to do to beat this guy. We can definitely do this. So basically, I'm going to tap this guy, and that's going to give us two movement, and then I'm going to play mana draw, and everything's black, so we have to use our crystal, your blanc, and that allows us to set this to green, and then we get two crystals in that color to use. Because as you know, it basically just says, take a mana die from the source, set it to any color except gold, gain two mana tokens of that color, don't re-roll it. So that's the situation we are now. And then I'm going to do ambush and I'm going to pump it. So I've actually produced, because this produces two move itself, I've actually produced six move. So if I come over here, that is one, two, three, four to get in there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I was just seeing if I could do an explore before I attacked, which I, which I can't. So I'm going to get in there. I'm so confident I can beat this guy. I'm just going to drag this over now. I'm going to, I've started doing another thing just recently, uh, just to make it easier for people to visually see what's going on. Uh, I'm going to copy the pug and I just uh, lock it down like that. So 
it's a lot easier to see what's been conquered. I don't know why, but my brain, <laughs> I find it hard sometimes to see the, the maps. Anyway, whatever. The point is we've gone one, two, three, four, because uh, forests and hills are reduced by one. Uh, see, forests and hills, whatever. I'm kind of rambling. Then we have to block this. So we just go boom plus the four block from ambush, that is five block. So he's blocked and that means we now only need three to attack. And here is the annoying bit, which is we only need to produce one attack, but unfortunately this guy can either produce two attack or seven attack if I use it with will focus. What would be really cool is if I had well, you know what I could do? We've only got two cards left and the game's about to end. I could draw those two cards with tranquility, but what do I need to save rage for? Nothing really. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go one, two, three, or power it, doesn't matter. And that will kill him. Okay, so just to recap, I've gone move two plus move four, which is six move. With the reduction, I get into the zone. Then I've blocked with one by playing that sideways, gained plus four block from ambush. That's the five block that has beaten this dude. And then I only need to attack back for three. So this is attack two and sideways for three or whatever. And that's that, he's destroyed. Nice. Okay, so that is three, one, two, three, and this goes one back. Unfortunately, that's all she wrote. There's not a lot else going on here. I guess I could use this thing, I don't really want to. And now it's our second player. He's just going to declare end of turn. Uh, third player is up. Let's draw up to five. Okay, so he's got a bit of gas here. He's got improvisation, rage, threaten, and a mana draw. But of course, remember, there's no mana. He doesn't have a white crystal. Be pardon. He doesn't have a white crystal, and there's only a green mana in the source. So. I guess we can provoke this guy and just see what he is. If we can kill him, that'll be very good. Because the, th the thing is, I don't think we'll be able to beat that dungeon. Because we've got no defense. We, we, we can either attack or defend, basically. So this guy's going to attack. See, the problem is, because this guy's a summon, we don't really know what we're going to get. Okay, let's uh, do it. So we get a dungeon monster. Flip it over. Oh no. Okay, interesting. Oh, it's got physical resistance. There's no way we can... Oh wait, we don't actually have to fight the... We only need to block it, don't we? Yeah, so the way summons work is that you draw the token, but you're only looking at the attack abilities. So we have four attack uh, cumbersome and brutal and then we need to do four damage so we only need to do four damage to kill him but we need to block four damage and we have to block that damage because it's also brutal so we take double wounds but it also has cumbersome now the thing about cumbersome is that uh, it's over here basically you can use move as block and if you every point of movement you spend reduces the attack by one if it goes to zero it's considered successfully blocked for the purposes of card triggers so maybe we can do this what have we got here we need four attack to start with we have a red crystal in reserve so that's one two three, four, let's move two, which makes him only two to block. And 
two to block. And then we go bam, three, four. Perfect. Okay, that's done. So what we did, this guy has got cumbersome. So we do two move, which reduces his attack to two. So this is now only two to block. Okay, and it's just a normal attack. Then we block by doing Rage, which is block two. So these two cards have blocked this, it's gone. So now we just need to hit back for four points. So this card without paying mana is three attack. So that's three attack, and then one sideways for four attack, and he's dead. So we managed to kill that guy, which is awesome. The Ablamo. Okay, so that's four. Uh, who are we? We're playing... Oh, it's this dude. Woohoo! <laughs> he levels up. Finally, we get this guy to level up before the end of the turn. Excellent. Wow, that was just so bad. Let's shuffle this up. What you got for us? Okay. Now, on her own is a pretty cool card i like this this ability this ability seems bad especially because she has abilities that trigger off not having units so why would you need extra influence but there is a number of cards like advanced action cards that are like say heal using influence or the other thing about these uh you know influence skills is that they allow you to use you know, thugs and other types of, of units that require influence to use them without having to spend cards. Uh, they're kind of an under, underutilized skill. Let's see what we've got coming out. Oh, ritual attack. We're just getting all the really bizarre, like, sacrifice cards this turn. We've had basically all the, all the blood rage cards and we've got now we've got Ritual Attack, and we also had Decompose come out. <laughs> That's crazy. Gain a wound, pay mana of any color, gain a card of that color from the advanced action offer and put it in your hand. So that's very, very handy. Basically, we can just gain any uh, advanced action. Now, the problem with Blood of Agents is that it can bloat your hand. You can get very, very large decks, and large decks are bad. But if you pay for it, you don't actually, you can just, it's actually easier to use. I actually think Blood of Ancients is what I'm going to take. We do have Ritual of Attack. This is interesting because it actually produces Siege Fire Attack, which is very, very strong. Blood Ritual is also incredibly strong. These are awesome. I'm going to take Blood of Ancients. You blamo. And... Deadly Aim is plus one to ranged and sieged and uh, plus two to normal attacks. That's uh, hard to pass up. Yeah, I'm going to have to go, go with that. Okay, and now we have this bloke, Yablamo. Uh, wait, he's supposed to be only drawing to five. Because uh, he only had one card in hand. Okay, he does have a heal, which is handy. And he's got concentration, so he's got good hands here. What's he got? Uh, he's actually beaten that, hasn't he? I'll uh, do that copy thing I was telling you about. Okay, so I guess he can explore. He can move here, or he can even move back onto there. Actually, he wants to get off here because uh, at night time, these become five to get through. So he hasn't really got anything to do except explore. Uh, there is a green in the source, so what I think he's going to do is take the green and use regenerate that allows him to throw away a card and draw a card I guess I can go 
bam, bam, that's five. So this can actually produce a red mana token. So that's actually paid for this, which means I now have five movement. And let's just do a big move into the, oh, God. Why does that keep happening? I've done that a couple of times. There we are. Bam. I'm gonna have to, I think I might make a bit of scripting that locks everything in place except the top one and then unlocks the top one when you take it because I've, I've accidentally pulled multiple tiles off a couple of times. Okay, so this guy's out. And we have another... Uh, uh, our first, beg your pardon, uh, temple or whatever you call it, monastery. Now, the thing you've got to remember is in these rule sets, you can't place them on swamps, which are the, uh, the five ones here. So as there is no valid place to place the dungeon, because remember, every time a monastery or a thing comes out, you've got to place a dungeon. I'm not quite sure of the rules here. So what I do is I just put it like this and then next time there's an exploration off either of these sides, this gets placed. So that's actually going to be a dungeon. We do have one of these out. Oh, wow, that's an awesome card. Okay, is there anything here we want to get? Siege Attack 4, that's awesome. Counts against Swiftness. That's pretty awesome. There's the Thug. This guy is freaking cool. I love Thugs. No one likes using Thugs because like, you get reputation hits and influence hits, but who cares? <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so... There's no real troops here that we want... Because we, we've only used two move and we've produced five already. Five, six, seven. We technically have eight move. Well, we may as well move into here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's a co-op move where you can go bam, bam and reveal. But because we're not going that way, why would we reveal it? So I'm just going to go into here. Let me see if I can actually kill this guy. We've already spent our green die. We need to do four damage. Reduce one enemy attack by four gain. We could actually probably kill this guy, but it would take a, re a lot of rearranging. I can't be bothered thinking through it right now. Uh, basically, there's a rule in Mage Knight that once something is revealed, it locks in your choices. So say if I pay two, uh, pay if I play a card and put a dice on it for four move, right and then i reveal that is locked so anytime you reveal something your choice is locked in but the way i play it is that as long as you produce the same result it's not locked in so i did a reveal if i wanted to i could jig this around that's just the way i like to play uh so what you'd need you need one two We could go four, four move. Yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm not interested in doing it. But bam, there we go. Oh, and this also gets uh, re-rolled. And we're sitting on the thing here to buy units next turn if we require. Okay, let's go back to first player. Let's draw the last cards. And we have tons of movement and there is a green excellent so we can go four five six move okay load beautiful what have we got here ah oh, beautiful okay so that's one, two, and we're just going to go three into there and call it quits. Gold X has got a good turn next turn. Okay. And the monster that turned up is quite hard because it's got uh, all that resistance. 
That's actually 10 to kill, and we've got no fire attack of any sort at this stage. Okay, and now we're back at, uh, you know, the witch, and she is... Uh, she's already declared end of round, so that is the end of the round. So let's just shuffle all these. Reset our boards. And bam, let's turn it to night, you block. Okay. Also, we need to re-roll all our die. Let's try and get some better uh, rolls. Come on, give us a decent roll. Still not particularly decent. So we have one, two, three, four colors. And remember, if it's even or if it's if the special die colors is even or over half, you re-roll them. Okay, at least we have a pretty decent roll this time. Bam. And we need to cycle our decks. Ooh, Song of Wind. I love that card. What have we got up here? Ooh, we have the Herbalists. Very, very good card, specifically for this quest because it's super cheap. And of course, it has a map ability. It's very, very good. And the the one that the, the herbalist ability that everyone overlooks is ready a level one or two unit. That is huge, especially if you combine it with other like. Basically, I want to get this onto gold decks because then we can use this move ability twice in a round. That's awesome. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to pull the tactics as well. Uh, just make sure everyone's pulling the right amount of cards. Five, and he's going to be pulling six cards because he's standing next to a conquered keep that he owns. Okay, so tactics choices go in reverse order, starting with the fourth player. So what have we got here? We have tons of movement. We've got some influence and a little bit of thing. So that influence is actually very, very good because he is standing on a turret thing here. So he can buy this. He only needs three to buy it. And this can produce four, and there's already a token. So let's have a look at the cards. We want to get a nice early one. Might take Long Night. That will give him first turn. So Long Night just means that when you're, you may shuffle some extra cards. It's not a particularly good card. It's more about going first and getting that herbalist. Okay, and what have you got? Well, we've got some mana fixing, we've got some influence, some movement and some attack. Very similar hand. Now, he wants to, or she wants to go into this dungeon ASAP. So, let's have a quick look at her hand. We can produce four attack. So, we've got a pretty terrible hand for attacking first round. So I think let's do a search. We're going to do preparation and take a card that is going to help us. Uh, is that what I want to do? Maybe I'll just take mana search. No, I'm going to take preparation. So what would be the way to get around this? Concentration, maybe that would make that would still have no block. Remember, we have a plus attack here. We do have a mana draw. I think what I'll do is I could take an improvisation that'll give us five. Yeah, I'll take improvisation. 
This is not a particularly good idea, but uh, we're going to do it anyway. Now it's uh, this chick's turn. What has she got? She was planning to take number two because she doesn't need mana fixing. Uh, oh, you know what I should have done, actually. I should have taken this. This is what I'll take. Yeah. I'm going to take Meditation. One time this night before any of your turns, you may shuffle the top five cards, including Wounds, from your hand back into your D deck. He's just going to do that straight away. He's going to get rid of this one, this one, and this one. Put him into the D deck. Draw back up to five. Okay, much better. Much better. And I think, where, where is she? She's right down here in the middle of nowhere. We do have this for movement. And we do have a march with a green crystal. So there's plenty of movement available to her. She doesn't really need to do anything here, does she? Um... She's going to take preparation. I'm not quite sure what card she wants to take, though. Let's take Blood Rage. Okie dokie. And finally, we have Gold X, who's going to take Mana Search. I hate that card. Okay, so that is you go last, you go second last, you go first, and gold X is second. Excellent. Right, save. Just saving camera angles now, and then I'm ready to go. So I think we kind of had a very, very hard session because the mana situation was just so dire but with any luck we'll have decent mana this time around uh, yeah so her plan is to get to here take out this she wants to take out there Goldex, meanwhile, has a great turn. You can take these guys out, then take these guys out. And this bloke here is probably going to buy a unit first turn and then head in this direction. Or maybe you can go here. No, nah, probably just head in this direction. Okay, well, that is the end of the first round, and I will see you guys next time.